Our guest today is a plant interventionist, lifestyle medicine coach, and food for life instructor with the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine and founder of the nonprofit Plantspiration. She advocates and promotes lifestyle medicine by educating, motivating, and inspiring people to adapt a plant-based lifestyle to prevent and reverse health issues, including heart disease, type 2 diabetes, certain cancers, and autoimmune disorders, obesity, and chronic illness. I could not be more excited to welcome you back to the show. Hello, Stephanie Ignapo. Hello, Jen. It's honestly an honor to be here. I'm so excited. I'm so excited about this. So thank you well, for having me. Uh, thank you for coming because I know like you are like the busiest woman I know for reals and you um, were on the show before and you know I was like well you know I want to talk about all the things that you talk about that you're changing lives with that you know that I also believe in so strongly and all the the health stuff and the wellness and the lifestyle and all of that. But I felt like because our, our podcast is for entrepreneurs, that I really needed to find a way to talk about your entrepreneurship. And we are going to talk about that a little bit. But I wanted you back on the show because I was like, you know what? I didn't have to make that tie in. You know why? Because if we're going to be successful entrepreneurs, if we're going to have successful businesses, if we're going to be successful people, if we want to not just have good health, but really, really feel great and have energy and creativity and all of the stuff that is required to run a business, then we, ha we have to take care of ourselves. And the best way to take care of ourselves as you teach is to use, to look at food as medicine. And, and, and so I'm just going to stop yapping because I want us to have the freedom to talk all about that and dive deep into that. And then, and then I do want to ask you about your content creation and what you're doing. You know, you are such an inspiration with what you do on social media, et cetera, et cetera. So we are going to talk about that. But right now, um, a lot of people will be listening. They're not watching. So they're not going to see, um, they don't see how beautiful you are, but they're going to, they will when they, when they go and look at all of your, your social media posts and, and, and go to your website. Um, and they're not going to see the before and after. So can you talk, talk us through like your journey, where it began? This, this is, this is so exciting. How, how did it all begin? How did I get here? How did I get global? How did I do a CEO entrepreneur? What a great place to start. And what you said was so important when we take care of ourselves, it's the best thing that we can do for everyone else. Um, so 11 years ago, my daughter came home and she said, I want to go vegan. And I said, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. You know, where are you going to get your protein? Where are you going to get your calcium? You know, and what they don't see is that I was 100 pounds heavier. I was riddled with chronic disease. I was facing double knee replacements. I could barely walk around. Um, heart disease, autoimmune, diverticulitis, IBS, migraines, um, arthritis. I mean, I just was hopeless, um, had zero confidence, and I had no purpose in life. So, you know, lo and behold, six months fast forward, we're hoping that her little vegan food thing will end soon because this is getting expensive with her plant milks and that kind of stuff. So... <clears throat> We were, we were really about to lose everything after John came out of, my husband John came out of what would be our, 11, our ninth surgery in 11 months. You know, financially, we were incredibly impacted by our health and the chronic diseases that John also had as well. You know, we thought, well, the older you get, you know, the sicker you get, the bigger you get. With this mindset, you know, it wasn't, there was no hope. So we're coming home from the surgery and I'm realizing we're going to lose everything. I can't physically work. He's running his own business. He can't keep up with all these health conditions. So I went back and I thought, oh yeah, I saw that documentary about plants where they said you could lose weight and whatever else they said about reversing disease. If, if we could really reverse disease, my doctor would have told me first of all. Mm -hmm. So we're coming home. I put in this documentary, Forks Over Knives, and it talked about losing weight reversing disease. And I just thought if, 
what I've been doing isn't working, Weight Watchers, diets on a Nutrisystem, all these, you know, diets I've been on my whole life, I might as well give this a shot. So I went 100%, you know, and I, the next day I, st I stopped bringing an animal home. I went, brought all this fruits and vegetables home and I hyped it up to the family who was just as unhealthy. You know, if I have heart disease, they're going to get heart disease. What I didn't realize is it's not hereditary. It's hereditarily what we learn to bring home. So here's where things start really snowballing. I'm talking day one or two. I'm just eating plants. I cannot get over. My hands aren't hurting. Um, my body's, you know, less inflamed. I'm like, this, there must be some truth to this. I'm already down quite a few pounds. I keep going. I keep going at this. I end up losing 100 pounds, reversing all my diseases. My family loses 250 pounds. And we accomplished this in 10 months with wow. what wow. felt like not much resources, support, um, other than what we were doing in our home. We had a society that wasn't built for it. We've got pediatricians giving me crap. You know, we've got the school thinking that I'm malnourishing my kids. Society was not set up to take this on. An evidence-based, by the way, evidence-based information that we could live longer, impact the quality of our planet, and, you know, why not do it without harming anything? All right, let's give it a go. So once this took off and I lost the weight and I had the energy and I had the confidence, I didn't just build my arms. I built up um, my ability to build a business um, that was much needed. I thought, well, let me just start this thing. I'll do a nonprofit. What's a nonprofit, they asked. I don't know, but it sounded good. You know, I didn't have a laptop. I started it on my cell phone. I had no history of business or any of this what I created, but I truly believe with the right diet and the right tools, that lifestyle stuff, that meditation, that mindfulness, that manifesting, that when you're thinking this clear and you feel like a machine, you can do what you can do anything you want. So I'm just going to tell anybody out there who's running a business, who who wants to work in just if you want to make things happen, we gotta we gotta put the premium fuel in our tank. It is a game changer. That's that's my job. So what's what's the what's the <laughs> premium fuel, Stephanie? Oh my gosh, whole food, plant based, greens, beans, fruits, and vegetables, as much as I want. Pasta every day, potatoes left and right. I can turn it into tacos, I could turn it into cakes, or I can just turn it into keeping it honestly super simple. So many people overthink it, become overwhelmed with it. So, well, that's what I created is. As a plant interventionist, I kind of come in, I tell people, hey, this is, you know, what you're doing, what you're eating, and how it's going to impact your future, or what you do today right now could really change your future. But so, Stephanie, there it is. Well, but Stephanie, where do you get your protein? Same place that the cows do, from the plants. All plants contain protein, and all protein comes from plants. Don't just take my word for it. You could research it, but they're not teaching that in school. They're not teaching that in medical school. They're not they're not teaching people this. So I am. And that's plant inspiration. Yeah. And a big thing, like your your tagline, if you will, is eat your plants off. Literally. And 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 you're all about that. And I love that you said you have as much as you want of these things. And you're not counting calories. And you know, you go on your TikTok and your Instagram reels. And, you know, so often you take us with you to the grocery store. I think you take us every single time you go and you're like, okay, everybody, this is, this is the vegan section. And like, and she shows the entire produce section or she'll go down the grains and the legumes and the, and the beans and the, you know, the pasta, here's the vegan section. But, um, but it really is so true that at the number one pushback um, when you tell someone that you're whole food plant based, it is where do you get your protein? And I've heard you say so many times, like our nation is protein obsessed and they should be fiber obsessed. We should be fiber obsessed. Why should we be fiber obsessed? Because that's, that's, that's everything. Um, fiber is the, fiber is a single thing that gets into your gut that heals your gut. It feeds your healthy gut, your healthy gut bacteria which truly is the catalyst for 
you know, what, what goes on mentally, physically, uh, fiber is what cleans out the arteries. Fiber is what um, boosts our metabolism, gets our mitochondria going, gets the cholesterol out that we shouldn't even be eating. We make our own. So fiber doesn't come in animals, eggs, cheese, you know, meat, chicken, fish. There's zero fiber in those things. And those animals now are not only filled with a problematic animal protein, they're loaded with cholesterol, they're loaded with saturated fat, and all that's doing is slowing our blood. It's literally thickening our blood, slowing it down, clogging our arteries, and people are over here trying to find a way so that we could eat meat and unclog our arteries and take these med medications. Why not just take out the problem? When we put bad fuel into our car, you know, we don't go back to that gas station. We don't go put that stuff back in us. But if we really took those same priorities and put it on ourselves, and of course with the right tools, you know, and understanding, um, it, it truly makes your engine run like a machine. Yeah, I'm not walking around worrying all day about, you know, what I'm going to look like in six months or what's going on. I, I'm doing it. I'm doing it right now. This is the most important part. So the fiber is just important. It revs us up. It keeps us living longer, opens up those arteries, um, and we're lacking it. Like 97% of America is lacking fiber. People are only getting 10, 10 grams of fiber a day. We should be getting 40 grams of fiber in a day, and that's we're only in plants. So we just need to eat more beans. People are living 100 years old who are eating more beans you know, and it's, it doesn't need to be a recipe with 52 ingredients. We don't need to milk our own almonds. We just need to open up a can of beans, you know, like Popeye opening up the spinach. He was onto something. Well, I love, so one of the things that you do that really differentiates you from everybody else that's talking about this, a couple of things. One is, you know, people hear vegan and they're like, oh yeah, um, I bought some vegan chicken nuggets the other day. They were so good. Or I went to a vegan restaurant the other day and I had whatever, whatever. And it was so delicious. And I, you know, I, I get the impossible burger at, at, at Burger King. And, and, um, and on the one hand, you're like, I'm not going to put, you know, I'm not going to put anybody down for that. Like, okay. Yeah. You know, that's still better than eating animals. Right. But, but beyond that, like it's, it's being vegan doesn't mean being healthy and, and, and your whole food plant base. So it is, it is about putting like just the good stuff in your body because the processed stuff has so many bad things in it. But the other thing that differentiates you beyond talking about the whole food plant-based is um, you make it so simple. And I see the people in your Saturday classes uh, and we'll, we're going to talk about your organization, Plant Inspiration, but, but Stephanie has these um, uh, never misses one Saturdays like clockwork, rain, shine, I don't know, Christmas, Thanksgiving, whatever. She's always there with her amazing partner and husband, John. And um, the people who come, a lot of them are very desperate. They're in very desperate situations. They've had very scary health um, health scares. And many of them have been living this way for decades. And suddenly, you know, um, there's Stephanie saying, like, eat your plants off. And people really are like, yeah, but how? But how? And Stephanie, you simplify it. You simplify it. And you make it so approachable. And it's not scary. But, he, but or and, I should say, you've had a number of people in there battling either um, pre, they're either pre-type 2 diabetic or they're full on, they've been diagnosed as type 2 diabetic. What I want to ask you, because, and this is a, like a selfish, selfish question, because I have a good friend who was recently diagnosed as the same. So I don't want to overwhelm her. Right. But I know what I know. I've learned so much from you and I've been living this life for, I don't know, five years now. And so I want to just tell her all the things, but also, you know, I don't want to overwhelm her or be overbearing. So sure. I've just gently been sort of sending her recipes. But if I send her anything that has any starch in it or fruit in it, she's like, my yeah. doctor says, I can't have that. Mm -hmm. My blood yeah. pressure, I mean, my blood pressure, my blood sugar spikes. So, so actually the glucose monitor will spike when right. a diabetic eats natural sugars. So I want to ask you, cause I really don't know, like what, how do you help? type two diabetics when there's so much starch involved in the way we eat? 
this is a really great question. And, and it goes again with if a doctor came in and said, hey, you need to get rid of the animal and you need to eat your fruits and your vegetables and your starches, we would get a really, we would get a better response to that actually. But when we try to tell somebody, you know, you have, if you eat this way, you can reverse it, it, it gets overwhelming and it gets confusing. So first and foremost, what you're doing, you being the inspiration is the greatest thing you could do for people, which is what you're doing. Second, people aren't going to like what I'm going to say. It is not about the recipes. I say it all the time. I'm not an influencer of recipes. I'm an influencer of keeping it real. And the number one thing people say to me when they come to me is, I have all the recipes. I have all the books. I, I know what I'm, I, I have it all here. Not to say what you're doing isn't phenomenal and isn't awesome. We need that because it's really exciting to see that we can pretty much eat what we want. We can do what we want. But it's the taking action part that really does make the difference. So what I would, I'm just going to say it to anybody that's out there struggling with this. It can be overwhelming and I want to simplify this for you. It is not the sugars, the fruits, the starches that is causing the insulin resistance or the type 2 diabetes. It's simply the animal fat, the animal protein, processed foods, Beyond Burger, stuff like that. Is Even processed vegan food is still high in fat. If, if I can have five minutes with this person and tell them, if, what, you, what do you eat? What do you like? If you like chocolate pudding, then we'll get you on chocolate pudding. You know, if you like brown rice, you know, we'll make it taste like this. So what I do is I find the simplest ways with their taste buds of what they're willing to try, present them with the evidence, like show up on the Wednesday night class or the Saturday support group, because hearing other people reverse their diabetes is the biggest impact of all their lives. Um, me telling them, me talking about it is one thing, but when you're hearing it over and over during all week long, is really what we're hearing, you know, people's A1C going from a 12 to an eight in two months, you mm -hmm. know, people saying every when Wednesday, they're getting off medications, they're losing weight. We need to have some education in here. We need to have some hope and we need to have a little guidance, lifestyle medicine, you know, coaching, which is about behavior changes and not about mistakes about getting better. So the first thing is to know it is something that can be reversed with the right things. It's not going to happen overnight. But be willing to accept that you want to try this, take on new things. Let's find what, what she likes, what they like, and explain if we take the animal out and we make these transitions, this can be done. Of course, we need to let your doctor know because people overdose on medicines because this works so darn fast, Jen. Um, we have to have that in place too, but my best advice would be, and I truly mean this, show up to a class just so that you can see the evidence. I'm working with a 20-year, Wednesday night is the nutrition part of this, where I do teach people, this is a 20-year evidence-based program. It's not just like, Stephanie lost 100 pounds, eat, go and vegan. I'm using evidence-based information. I've been doing this for 11 years. I do teach people how to keep it simple, kick the recipes to the side, and give them a support system that keeps this going when society just isn't ready for this amazingness. Yeah. And like, let's talk about the evidence-based part of it. Like you work with doctors, you, um, I mean, these aren't, um, gurus. These are like board certified doctors and surgeons and, you know, the people who you've learned from Dr. Barnard, Dr. Um, McGregor, Esselstyn, yeah, Esselstyn. right. And so, um, and, and what has blown me away, I mean, obviously, I believe in this, this lifestyle, uh, and I love it so much because it's not restrictive. It's the opposite of restrictive. If you exactly. can eat everything you want that is, you know, just to the right of the red line, like it's a whole food, yep. it's a whole food, then you can have as much as you want whenever you want. And like, that's so easy, you know, um, but um what I have seen is that these people come into your Saturday support group or in your Facebook community, or they'll say on the Wednesday night um, class that they're, they've gotten off their medications. Yeah, they've gotten off their statins. They've gotten off their insulin. Like it's unbelievable. And it's not like a couple of people. It happens all the time. So the thing though is um, the best doctors in the world 
still aren't on the same page. I went to the Mayo Clinic recently for an executive physical, um, which was, I was excited about in Arizona. They do like the whole shebang. And um, I had a, the, a really a brilliant doctor. I loved her. I, I'll go back and see her again. But yeah. when it came to like conversation about nutrition, she's like, well, you know, you need, you really need to um, get your protein. And I guarantee you your B12 is going to come back low. And we were waiting for the lab results. My B12 was 100% fine. I do of take a supplement for B12, but every, all my numbers. And she was like, well, you know, at 50, what am I now? 55 you know, you, you just really amazing. need to make sure you're eating more fish. You need to make, and I was like, no, you don't, you don't. And she, and she said, um, you know, olive oil is good for you. And I was like, but I've read olive oil is, is not good for you. Oh, I'm having that debate with so many people right now. Can we talk about that for two seconds? We can. Like, yeah. yeah like, and I want to talk about soy and we, I want to just yeah. dispel those two myths. Of course. And of then course. I want to talk about your business. Okay. So Let's talk about, what was the first thing I said I wanted to talk about? Well, doctors are not taught about nutrition in medical school. They are not teaching teaching nutrition or root cause of disease in medical school. And it, you have these great doctors, you know, they're doing heart surgeries, they're helping people with cancers, they're doing this amazing stuff with medicine, but they're really not getting down to the root cause. You know, they're doing studies right now to see like how we can get the pancreas to not be impacted by meat. In my mind, I'm like, why don't we just stop eating the meat and then we don't have a problem? <laughs> right, it right. seems so simple and it, it truly is. It really is that simple, but, but there is no, I'm going to just say it. This is what it's about. There is no money in getting people off medicine. There is no money in getting people off drugs. There is no money in healthy people. This is a sick care system. I'm going to say it like it is. And this is why I started Plantspiration, and now I am teaching the medical students at Rutgers and at NYU because they realize we have got to pay attention to the evidence that's been around for a long time, and it works, and I believe people have a right to know. Plants may not be for everyone, but they work for everyone, and everyone has a right to know, and I just was one impacted by it, knowing that this was a dumb idea to why didn't my doctor tell me to, I need to tell everybody this because it doesn't seem fair. It doesn't seem right. So the nonprofit part of it, of course, I'm making money. Of course, all that's going. But the point was, is I wanted to keep this inexpensive. I wanted to keep this attainable. And what other people are charging $3,000, $6,000 for, I have fought really hard to keep it something that everybody could join and do. And at 50 bucks a month, that's how people are reversing disease. Now, I'm not a fan of a lot of their doctors, but there's doctors out there that are supporting this and we need to look for them. Just like a good car dealer, just like a good insurance guy, we need to do the research on doctors that support the lifestyle. And there's two types of doctors. There's vegans and there's ones who haven't done the research. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Love that. That's I love that. that. So that's, that's what I have to say about that. Doctors are amazing. They're great. Um, but what I do, you know, if you've got a leaky faucet, Jen, how many days are you going to keep wiping it up and wiping it up and wiping it up before you actually call the plumber in? I'm the plumber. Yeah, I love that. I love that. I'm and you know, um, I had this thought, you know, how sometimes like you could say a word over suddenly a word sounds so weird to you. You're just like, that's the weirdest word. I haven't had that experience in a while. I remember the last time that happened to me, the word was shampoo. Oh, that's so weird. random. It's like, what a weird shampoo. Anyway, weird um, but I can't get the same, I can't get that same, like that moment is gone. I can't, I can't feel the weirdness the way that I did when I first thought about it. But I had this moment, which is similar. I, I thought about pouring Coca-Cola on one of your houseplants. Would you ever think of to do that? No, I would. It would kill it. Right, but let's just guzzle one. Yeah. Would you put a donut like on your or or, or a slab of a pork chop on your on your herb garden, like no. or or better example, would you pour olive oil on your on your garden? No, it's like so wrong. It's so wrong, and yet we have no problem. And believe me, I spent most of my life eating Indeed. all the bad things, you yeah. know? So I am not, I am not don't, coming from a place of judgment. The, don't put the bacon grease down the drain. We don't want to clog the drain. Yes. Do oh not put God. the bacon grease down the drain. And everybody <laughs> right now is thinking, oh my gosh, I grew up not putting bacon grease down the drain. That same 
thing is going on to our Perfect. arteries. That's a, such a better analogy. That's so, yeah. so, so good. Um, okay. So on the business end of things, I don't know if I've covered everything that I want to with the food stuff, but um, we'll come back to it in a second if we need to. I want to talk about your nonprofit. So I'm, we may have chatted about this the first time you were on the show, but I have to tell the story again because I, you know, Stephanie Cr comes across my feed. She's on TikTok and she's ridiculous, right? Like you are ridiculous. Like she's on roller skates. She's got, there's a, she's, she roller skates in her living room um and to music and she has this like little microphone teeny weeny it's about three inches big like a like a the kind that like a a game show host would carry back in the day you know but or like share but it's tiny and she wears it on her bike rides she goes on these long bike rides with her son with her husband and she's she's always like talking into this microphone and she's got a megaphone and really and truly like so entertaining, so engaging, like the classes are phenomenal. But anyway, I see her on social media, I see you on social media. And I'm like, this girl, this girl's crazy, but I love her. And so I, I started following and then you showed up on Chef AJ's show on YouTube and you were showing how to make these, I, mean, I think they're the black bean, black bean burgers. Yeah, it was our burgers. Yeah. It was and burgers. you just crushed it. I mean, I think Chef AJ, and for those of you who don't know who Chef AJ is, she's sort of like the Mick Jagger of the vegan world. Like she's the Johnny Carson. She was on Johnny, Johnny Carson. Carson. She was yeah. on Johnny Carson. She's the Johnny Carson of the plant-based world. So if you get on Chef AJ, you've made it. Like Yes, that's exactly. That's so true because she has this huge audience. So, so I'm like, oh, there's that crazy girl again. And, um, <laughs> and so, so I start really following her. I make the recipe. It's delicious. I really start following her. And then I just, I ended up joining, I came to one of your classes, um, on Wednesday night and I just, um, and then I just fell in love with you and everything that you're doing. But I noticed because I'm a marketer and I have this online business that I could tell that you just didn't have all your systems optimized. True, you know, I could true. tell that you were, you were doing what so many of us do in the early days. You're just like doing it all yourself. Right. Yep, and yep. every single thing, doing it yourself. And so I was like, Stephanie, I can help you with this. And I was like, and I have some really great ideas for you. And I was like, you know, you could charge a lot, a lot more if you did like one-on-one -on -one coaching and, you know, and then you should, you should adjust your prices for your membership site because P.S. when I joined her membership, I could not believe the value that that you were giving away. So you get a one on one call really, really and truly like if we're being honest, I think you just give them whenever people need it. But I think technically you say like once a month, but really, yeah. if you need Stephanie, she's there. You might not want me to promote that if you want me That's to edit okay. it out. No, it's true. It, it's, it's just it's gotten better. We've got a great system now. We keep going. I love this. Yeah, no, I can see. No, your systems are all like on fire now. But but this is back back then. And you um so so you get step like you need her, she's there. Um you get the weekly um you get your weekly Saturday support group. They're so inspiring. Um then you, and people will, you know, they share sort of their their struggles and their triumphs, but also like a really great vegan bouillon that has no oil in it that they just found or some yeah. cool thing. And, 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 it, it, and you're so excited to find this new product. And then the Wednesday night is pure education and recipes. But like Stephanie said, like you said, I, I keep talking about you in third person and it's first okay. person. Anyway. So like you said, it's not, um, they're not fancy recipes, but that's what nobody wants a fancy recipe. It's like right. well, the food you really eat, the food we all really eat, but delicious, delicious, easy to put together stuff. Then you get yoga on Sundays, which you're always there for. And um, I feel like I'm missing something. Um, oh, and then you do your like your motivational live streams on Mondays. And then there's the community that you have access to. So I was like, Stephanie, um, you can like charge way more for what you're, what you're charging. And she was like, very politely, Jen, I'm not trying to, that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to make a fortune over here. I'm trying to help people. I'm trying to spread this, you know, what, what has, what has changed my life so dramatically and my family and my happiness and my wellness and the way I view the world. I want to share that with people. Well, boy, <laughs> I was like, damn, wow, this girl really talk about walking the talk. And then you, and you were working so hard to start this nonprofit, which was such yeah. a huge undertaking. I mean, that's no huge. easy feat and you got it. 
you yeah. got the nonprofit and you've yeah. since a, a documentary has been made about you. You have been, uh, you were mentioned or you got a part in um, Neil Barnard's new book, The Power Foods Diet. I rec highly recommend this book to everybody. Um, so yeah, what am I leaving out? This is just awesome the way you summed it up. And I know that everybody's going to like rewind and go, did she just say she wasn't here to make money? Which is completely, again, going against the grain. And it's not that I'm not for it and all about it. And what I want is donations. What I want is sponsors um, so that I can keep helping these people. If you're going to donate money, I'll tell you a place where it's really going back into it. Because on top of it, John and I volunteer our time to the Wednesday night classes, to the Saturday support. And then I do a lot. You know, here's what it's about. And it comes down to exactly being an entrepreneur. I'm not talking about it. I'm not just, you know, showing the studies and doing the research. I'm living it. I'm doing it. And I want to show people, if you really want to make this work, you know, I don't want to hear like, well, I work all day and I can't do this. Ladies and gentlemen, everybody out there, I'm working my ass off, but I couldn't do it without the plants. And that doesn't mean I'm working 80 hours a week. This is where I've taken my... I practice what I teach. I do meditate. I do breathe. I'm out there riding my bike. I'm out there roller skating. I'm out there having fun. And if I didn't have those parts of my life, there's no way I would be as successful as I am because this is hard. This is hard. And that is what makes us happen. The good food, the good, the good mood comes with it. Failing and knowing like, oh, look at all this positive stuff I've had going on has helped me get through all those things where I realize that really was the confidence building of all this stuff. You know, either I was too dumb to realize I was doing it wrong, you know, it's kind of sometimes what I think, but all of the, the way that I, this was my second chance at life. So all the failures to me were like, oh, that is nothing. Like I almost died or, you know, this was how horrible my life was before. All of these obstacles, becoming an entrepreneur, going global, you know, actually building a business off my phone, this was all simple because of the way that I started perceiving my life, changing my life, living a more peaceful way. Whatever mistakes happen, whatever, we were here to learn from it. And I really believe that when you do manifest, and I don't mean just thinking about it, you have to actually do it. When you do envision where you're going, the way you plan for your vacation, the way that we schedule hair appointments, you know, eight weeks in advance. When we schedule what we want, we make it happen. And if everybody here is tuning in to be a better entrepreneur and a better business person, well, they're in the right place. You're giving us all the right tools, but we're never going to be able to grasp it if we're not taking care of ourselves first. It, it comes right down to, I had to put myself first. So, you know, some people might say, well, it's selfish or I won't be able to get this done. It's responsible because you guys are on a mission. You have a business to run. You want to be an entrepreneur. You want to be the best version of yourself. And if you're not aligned in practicing what you teach or preach, it's not going to feel the right way when you put it out there. When you start taking care of yourself and Jen, you know, you're going to the top. You're at the top. It's not going to stop because there's nothing but good that you're putting in. And that just brings more. It's just coming out. It just does all the right things for you. Well, so well said. And I just, you know, I just, I just know that the resistance that there will be from a lot of people who listen to this, at least maybe sure. the first time they listen, maybe they listen a second time and they, and they let you their guard down that. a little bit. Right. Because I think, first of all, I am a huge, I am, I am the textbook example of a product of our diet culture in this country. <laughs> You're raising your hand too. Been there. And, yeah. And like, I, I've done everything. And I, you know, before I was vegan, I was paleo. I mean, I never went keto, but I was probably, it was probably on my list Did to it. try once paleo stopped working, you know, like it was, it was something. Uh, now I'm horrified to think that I would have even considered a keto diet. Um, but increases the risk is, of all cause mortality. Let me just add that in there. Increases say that risk again. Of all, in, keto increases risk of all cause mortality. And this isn't just because I've read books or done the research. I attend, you know, annual, you know, international conferences of nutrition and medicine. Doctors have about six to eight hours of nutrition education. I have about 8,000. Um, I've invested the last 10 years of, a, you know, gaining all that information. So, it is, it's just another mission for me to get that information out there because 
really that's marketing keto and, you know, into the sick care system. And it's what everybody's doing because, well, keto works. Keto works. You can absolutely lose weight doing keto. If you guys want to lose weight, do keto. You could also lose weight doing cocaine. That doesn't make it healthy. (laughs) It doesn't make it healthy. So you're right when you say we have to be open-minded. And I hope people hear me when I say, I thought this was stupid. I thought this was a dumb idea. Um, And I had to really rethink who's telling me that and where am I getting that information? Because when you look at the studies and you see the people like myself doing it and the whole Plantspiration Nation, it's undeniable. If you are willing to make the, if you're willing to say, you know what, I'm going to give this a try. You have nothing to lose, but chronic disease and weight. You know, we should all be eating more fruits and vegetables for goodness sakes, you know, and it's just. It's true. But I know that the resistance is a big part of it is the carp. Like, God forbid I should eat a carp. You know what I mean? And like, I'm not, I cannot have a potato. I cannot have pasta, you know, and that's how I was. I was, even when I started my vegan journey before I met you and I was trying to figure it all out and my God, it was such a journey. Like I thought, I just didn't know, I just didn't know. And I didn't have a guide like you. So I was just trying to figure it out myself. And, um, I was trying to replicate like a paleo, but replacing it with tofu, right. Or seitan or, or vegan chicken nuggets or something. And so I was just trying everything to not do carbs. And I'm just so glad, thank thank you, Plantspiration, that I learned that oh, I can have all of it. You know, I can have all of it and keep the weight off. I love pasta. Um, I just did a, a reel yesterday where I'm holding my pasta bags up on my face, seeing how much I love it. <laughs> and I eat it every day. <laughs> Because it is the biggest misconception that we shouldn't be having pasta when it's what's helping people actually reverse heart disease and reverse type type 2 diabetes. Pasta is actually low calorie, low glycemic. And when we don't have egg, animal, you know, cholesterol in it, it does exactly the opposite of what people think. It's not what's making us fat or gain weight. It's actually the oil, the butter, the cheese that we put on the pasta. That's where the fats are coming in. There's a really amazing tool that I work with. It's like, I, I wish I would have invented it. It's like a little Stephanie. It's called chronometer.com. If you put in chronometer, the food that you're eating, and you see how much fat it comes to every day, it's insane on a standard American diet. No wonder people have to eat low calorie, low, I mean, cut their calorie, cut their calorie, cut their calorie, because the fats are so high. That's what that concept is that they've created. Amazing marketing, whoever invented this whole sick care system. Um, And when you get back to really real food, um, before vegan was a word, or or before whole food plant-based was used, it was truly vegan, grains, greens, fruits, vegetables. It was very simple. Now vegan is very in marketing and, you know, Burger King has vegan stuff that doesn't mean healthy, of course. So when we get down to to the whole grains, I don't know how else to say this, you guys, but people are eating 2,000 calories a day. Uh, eating pasta every day, eating brown rice every day, eating potatoes every day, and they're dropping weight like mad. They're losing weight. They're reversing their diseases. Once you take that animal out and you replace it with all these whole whole foods loaded with fiber, vitamins, nutrients, minerals, phytonutrients, cancer fighters. I mean, everybody's looking for a pill, but it's really in the plants. We're eating our plants off. Plantspiration.org, you guys. Plantspiration.org. Like, like, go and check Stephanie out and, and her, her amazing work and her amazing community that, that she and her husband, John, have built. And, you know, so wrapping up, I just want to summarize and say a couple of things. Number one, um, I really, really hope you guys will... If you're listening to this, if you're watching this, that you'll you'll just um, just give it a try. Even like start with a start meatless Monday and see you know and eat just whole plants all Monday, you know, and whole foods on Monday and just see how you feel. Um, but but definitely please open your mind because I want you to feel so good um, that you show up to work every day, energized to work on your business and really be you know the best version of yourself. Secondly, I want you to follow Stephanie. I want you to go to plantspiration.org. If you, if you, if you want to take this journey with us, uh, I hope you join her amazing membership and donate um, to the nonprofit. Uh, 
And then from a business standpoint, purely, I want you to follow her on social media to, to watch how she delivers every day, every single day, multiple times a day across all channels. And she just makes it look so easy. She's having so much fun. And uh, her content, by the way, here's the other thing I want to say about, about your content, Stephanie, is that it's very much repetitive. Um, but I, 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 number one, I don't think, I don't know if you had a plan, but it could be deliberate because she's beating a drum. She's beating a drum as we all need to be doing. You beat the drum of the thing that you want your people to know. And, and I think a lot of times when we're creating content, we're like, oh, I talked about that yesterday. <laughs> so like you, you talk about it every day. And so, you know, and then what happens is, you know, like when you have a favorite song and then you're waiting for that drum solo or you're waiting for that next line, I find myself doing that with your content because I know at some point I'm going to hear all the cheesy without the diseasey. <laughs> <laughs> That's just one of many little delicious, wonderful phrases that you're going to get. And so, and they're all, they're all woven into her social media because, and she doesn't have to try because she's just being a hundred percent herself, right? True. You are True. being a hundred percent yourself. So it doesn't, you know, so, so I'm not saying to, um, to caught, you know, to go roller skating, you guys, um, in your living room, but I'm, I'm just saying what if you want a bit of inspiration of someone who's really using social media really, really well check out Stephanie's social media. Um, all right. Have we well, left anything out? Anything? I just want to say thank you. No, really you, what you just said about my social media, that means so much because I'm being very vulnerable and honest when I say I've had no marketing training and I've had, you know, I had to look up YouTube videos. I had to kind of watch what was going on. You know, it's, it really is about a passion. It really is about being myself and it is, it is kind of a marketing strategy that I stumbled upon on accident. I can't afford commercials yet, so I have to be the commercial. And what is McDonald's doing? They're creating these these sayings. They're repeating it every day. Give yourself a break today, but I say give your arteries a break today. And I can't <laughs> say it enough because somebody's listening out there. They're going to hear this. It's going to go over their head. They're going to listen to the marketing side or the business side or the motivation. But I want you to know, even if you don't take on the plants, there is somebody out there that you could save their life just by saying, hey, did you know you could go to plantspiration.org? You could actually just sign up for a class. You know, it's worth knowing that there's somewhere where we can go where I'm not just talking about it. I'm teaching it. I'm doing it with you because I know what it's like to be sitting there going, well, I could never give up my cheese and I could never give up this. That was me, you guys. That was me. Listen to what Jen's saying. She's a genius. You know exactly what you're doing and to fuel yourself the way you are and to bring this to everybody else that's being the biggest front row entrepreneur that we can possibly be oh so thank you thanks Steffi. well let's close on that note that was pretty perfect one last thing you could <laughs> she just dropped her mic um one last thing that you can um that i didn't mention was that they could sign up for a class for free, that first class, and check it out, right? Is I absolutely that? want everybody to email team at Plantspiration and put in the subject line, Jen, front row entrepreneur. I'll send them a free class 100%. That's how confident I am that you're going to come for the laughs, but you're going to stay for the plants. I love it. I love it. Well, let's go eat our plants off, Stephanie. Thank you so, so much. You're welcome. Thank you. That was great.